Cody's News and Sports Station 800 KXIC. We are joined in studio by Ron. Hi, Ron. Hello. How are you doing? I am doing wonderful. So uh, what are we going to be talking about this week on the show? What's the breed for me? The I like that. <laughs> the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. Uh, is that the right breed for you? It's a large breed and it's one of the few that are non-shedding so that's a unique breed in itself so we'll go through the history of all that and is it the right breed for you then we're going to go into uh socializing your dog hey does your dog bite or uh bark when it's not supposed to like when the door's opening we're going to talk about socializing your dog uh, and or cats some of this is actually applicable to cats uh, to make them a more socially acceptable in that family <laughs> <laughs> that was that was delicately put there socially acceptable what it, it is uh, amazing because i have the amazing pet story of the week, which features <laughs> a cat. Did you like that segue? I like that. It's time for the amazing pet story of the week. This one comes to us from East Coast. They don't actually say exactly where it was, but it starts out, I remember moving into an apartment with cats, Indy and Sherman. It was a large loft space with lots of hanging ductwork for heating and cooling and large windows extending to the ceiling letting lots of morning sun in but it was an old factory so she wanted to get the cats used to jumping up on the window windowsill she says i spent time holding the cats one at a time and placing them on the bed the window sill saying here sweetie this is how you get up here picture me play hopping the cats around to show them how to jump up onto the windowsill she says i was so concerned that they would pine away on the floor of this high ceiling space unable to enjoy their sun baths shortly afterwards we were about to ready to leave the apartment to run errands we did our customary head count of the cats we found sherman lounging right where he was supposed to be on the bed of the sill. Oh, nice. But indeed, the other cat was nowhere to be found. Uh-oh. More frantic opening of cabinet doors and looking under furniture followed. Suddenly, we heard a faint meow. Yes, we've had that one. And looked skyward Ooh. there atop the ledge overlooking the kitchen on top of the ductwork right next to uh, where a high wire... <laughs> Uh, 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 was hanging down, sat in me, looking smug and proud. We snapped a picture, <laughs> and uh, he is uh, now 15 years old, still trying to get up to that top perch. But uh, now that's the amazing pet story of the week. Anybody that is a cat owner knows that sound of, where is he? Where is she? Where is she? <laughs> <laughs> Just his mask. You don't know. It's like behind something. You know, where is it? Where is it? And then uh, for us, it's always we'll go into the storage room, and then he slinks in there. We don't even know it. You close the door, walk out. Where's Gilbert next morning? Gosh, I haven't seen him. He's usually up here looking for food. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is uh, – I, I, cats, cats certainly have a different personality than dogs, uh, but I, I liked the part where it said that uh, when they looked up on the, uh, on the top of the ductwork uh, – the cat is just kind of looking down going, yeah, I, I'm a cat. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's instinct. Uh, so that's the amazing pet story. What else is going on at the uh, store this week? Uh, we are having a blast. Oh, what? Spring break is out or done. done. And so we're kind of excited about that. That was the spring breaks get hectic and then they get slow and then hectic. You know, it's just all the families coming in and out of town and the students coming in and out of town and all that. So it's nice to get back to the norma normal normality uh, of things. And I think we see that in our own houses as well. That vacation was really fun, but it's also good to be back in my bed. So we're getting back into the scheme of things um, and having fun. Good. It is the Positively Petland show right here on 800 KXIC every Sunday morning. We're going to be continuing the talk with Ron, owner of Petland, Eastside, Iowa City, right over there by the Iowa City Marketplace. Here are your hours today, Ron. We're open today from noon until 6 p.m., and then every other day we're open from, was it 10 a.m. until 9 p.m. A lot of people come in and take advantage of our $5.00. Uh, nail trims, no appointments necessary. Just bring in your vaccination schedule. Um, but you also, a ton 
people take advantage of our bot and get one free on all cat and dog food. And we track that for you so you don't have to be clipping the UPCs or anything like that. It's a real convenient program. And I go back to the manufacturer to get that reimbursed. So don't think I'm, you know, anybody's up in price to pay for it. No, we're giving you rock bottom pricing and then they pay for that. And that's something that only a local owner can get done. The big box stores can't do that kind of can't thing. do it so head over to petland east side iowa city next to the iowa city marketplace marketplace it is the positively petland show right here on 800 kxic and kxic.com good morning For a second, you kicked out. No, I would never do that. You're this, done. This is your show, man. I don't get. I don't rule the oh, roost. Oh, we gotta. We'll find ways that we make things unique or whatever. Get our shtick going. Shtick. All right, ready for segment two. Yes. This is where you talk a long time. Where you, you have your coffee. You're good to go. I'm good to go. Okay. I'm learning the format here quickly. <laughs> My wife would laugh right now. You, you actually take care of that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Positively Petland Show. Good Sunday morning here at and on 800KXIC and KXIC.com. Hi, Ron. Hello. So, uh, uh, we are talking about uh, Petland and all of the amazing things going on at Petland. Uh, and I know that you have a breed of the week that you are just dying to tell us about. South Dakota Wheaton is a really fun breed. It is one of the few large breeds purebred that is non-shedding say the name one more time soft coated wheaton terrier and we're going to learn about the heritage and all that akc does a nice write-up on all these and so we're going to go through that but i want you to think you know if you are that large breed kind of dog person uh oh but you know the other breeds those labs and goldens i know they're the one most wonderful dog in the world i just don't like that shedding consider this soft coated wheaton because it uh, has a lot of that spunk, loyalty, and all that kind of a thing in them, um, but they don't shed. So you're going to need to get them groomed and all that kind of stuff. That, that is the other side of the coin, by the way. If you have a shedding dog, you usually don't go to the groomer to get the hair clipped and all that kind of stuff. Um, we have a dachshund, and that is a shedding dog, but it's short hair, so we never go to the groomer. We don't give her a bath every few days kind of a thing, and that's about it. With Susie, our non-shedding dog i guess you know on the front end i just didn't realize that you have to go to a groomer to get it well at the beginning i cut it myself and so i do the lion shapes and all that kind of stuff well while the kids at that age loved it wendy was like all right i just want it to look like a really beautiful dog so we do now go to a groomer and I do appreciate the what groomers can do um and but that's every what two two months month and a half to every three months, somewhere in that range. And that's a little bit more than I thought. There's also some primping that you got to do with these guys on a daily basis, brushing, little eye gooby wipe, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, so just know that there's pros and cons to both of them. Um, if you're looking for a low maintenance dog, I recommend highly a small dog that's shedding. You're Why not shedding? Because you don't have to go to the groomer. Oh, okay. I see. Sorry. And it, they are so easy. You, a bath, is about three minutes long if you need to do a quick rinse kind of a thing. Put it in the sink, whoop, 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 towel dry, and you're done. And so that's the benefit of those, a dachshund, a miniature pincher, a chihuahua. You know, there's a lot of breeds to choose from in that regard. So, all right, let's get on to the soft-coated wheat, and I kind of gave the soft-coated wheat and a bad name all of a sudden. It, it loves my shoes. <laughs> this is the cockapoo. So we also have a cockapoo with us today. Oh, that's right. Right now, the soft-coated wheat is actually out with the salespeople. I get confused sometimes. Romping around. Uh, no problem. That, that's Most people get confused on what uh, what we've got going. If you were listening to us and watching us on YouTube, you can uh, do a search on Google or in YouTube, do Positively Petland Show, and you're going to come up with all of our shows. Uh, what I was just showing on air was the cockapoo, a very 
a beautifully colored cockapoo, cocker spaniel poodle with a merle type color in it. So back to the, the, the king of the show though, the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. Here's a little bit of history on it. The roots of the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier trace back some 200 years in its country of origin, which is... Oh gosh, Scott, Skyland. I think you're, I, you're, you're, I, here, in my ignorance, I'm going to say you're close. Ireland. Okay. That's pretty close. Yeah. And I might be all washed. I should have the- gotten that. Yeah. Oh, it's always, Jeepers. I always hindsight. Although there was no specific mention of the breed per se that are, are records referencing the more generic Irish terrier along with the mention of the color Wheaton the term Irish terrier was in those days collective refer. Yeah, collective, referring to all the working earth dogs of Ireland. Few doubt that the long-legged terrier breeds in Ireland came about as the result of statues passed by Ireland's house. Oh, statuettes. Jeepers. There's the the, creepers. There's the engineer coming out at me. The statuettes passed by Ireland House of Parliament in the 1600s, making it illegal for any but wealthy landowners to keep or own any such hound or spaniel purpose of hunting. As a consequence, Irish tenant farmers developed dogs they could legally keep and breed, the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier among them. So this is, we've heard this a couple of times in the history where the royalty, well-to-do families or whatever had their breeds, actually made it illegal for us peasants to have those breeds. Whoa, 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 whoa. Us peasants? I'm, I'm in the peasants. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm All sorry. Right. You were in the royal family. I just don't like being uh, labeled that way. But uh, <laughs> yes, I, I'm i of peasant level with you as well. I would be in that. Um, but what's interesting is, is I, and I love the, you know, this is so American in it and that they went, okay, fine. We'll develop a better one. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. And so that's where the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier comes from. It goes on, the first two recorded soft Wheaton Terriers arrived in the United States back in 1947. Uh, they were, you know, came in through AKC, what did I, it looks like on St. Patrick's Day in 1962. So that's how it propagated over here. So we've only had them in here for what the last little over 50, 60 years, um, where they've, it's been in existence for over 200 years. So that's the history, form, and function of this large breed non-shedding dog this poor man's hound so now we know why it's called that served the tenant farmer's household as a general all-purpose farm dog he herded and guarded the sheep this one is chewing on my shoes right now oh they were doing that this morning outside when we were trying to get them to go potty they they wouldn't go potty they would kept on chewing all right herded and guarded the sheep killed vermin and warned the intruders Keen of scent, a Wheaton might often be found with his master out for the hunt, bringing down small game, perhaps even helping in the kitchen by turning the spit. The spit? Yes. Rotating Rotating the spit like a cooking spit. So that's a little bit on the form of function. Living with one, Wheaton temperament is unique, combined the alert intelligence of a terrier with the steadiness of a working dog, a quick Lively, affectionate dog, the Wheaton retains his puppy exuberance and medium to high energy level all his life. He can thrive in the city or the country so long as he is close to his people and receives ample daily exercise. I think that described a Wheaton very, very well. I think it did also. The statutes put forth. Yes, the statues. The statues or statutes. Uh, the Positively Petland show uh, recorded live in front of a studio <laughs> audience. <laughs> yeah, you can hear them all laughing right now. <laughs> uh, another thing to note, if you see pictures of soft-coated wheat and terriers, especially as a puppy, you're going to see a darker brown, brownish kind of coloring. Know that the soft-coated wheat and terrier goes blonde as an adult, so a lighter color, and then keeps some of the tones around the snoot. So when you see this one, we have one in the store right now, and we typically have them uh, almost always in our store because real popular breed, people are looking for that non-shedding in a large breed. Um, Just know that, hey, it is a beautiful uh, darker coat when they're younger, but 
here, all, the one that we have right now, if you looked at the base of the fur, it's already blonde. You know, the blonde is coming through. <laughs> Wait, if, we're, if you color your hair, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Except usually we're trying to go blonde. This one naturally has blonde. Have oh, you ever seen anybody try to dye a dog's hair? Oh, yes. Really? Oh, yeah. That, that's a fun thing. It's kind of like a around here, it's a Halloween-ish kind okay. of a thing. All right. But you get outside of the Midwest and you see lots of little bright pinks and see that's my Midwest roots. That just seems absolutely for oh, how to me. about painting the nails? Okay, now wait a second with my great Dane. Oh no. Oh of course I did. Of <laughs> you course are funny. I did. She would lay there on her side and just let me primp them after I did the toenail trim with the sander and the whole entire So what was your favorite color? Because you had a a gray harlequin? Uh, uh blue merle. Blue Merle. Blue Merle, Great Dane. Um, well, she was a she was a Pris. So, oh. oh, she was always red. So red. Yeah. Oh my gosh, always red. Oh, that's uh, and she absolutely loved it. <laughs> I'm I'm losing my shoe. I was going to ask how many uh, shoelaces you actually go through in any any given year. I did not select these shoes on purpose, but these shoelaces are non destructible. These like are great. great. I, yeah, and I, not that I let them go after it, but. We've been what ten minutes of nonstop, and I went okay. We, I'm not. So gonna... I wear Merrells also. I just, yeah. I love. I hate tying shoes, by the way. So uh, the elastic shoe band. You are an old man. I, a little bit. I'm sorry. Wait, no, Dad. I mean, <laughs> the Dad bod. Dad, old, Dad, old man. <laughs> You're going downhill. No, I am not. I'm going uphill, Ron. I, uh, I, I'm full of energy and vigor, just like. But you like your slip on. The terrier. Do you yeah. like the Velcro strap too? Um. I'm not. Oh at, no! Don't say. I'm not it. at the point of Velcro strap, um, but uh, a good mock that I don't even have to bend over and and even touch that I can just oh, go into. So, are you, do you like do the? I don't even know what kind of shoes. Just you hijacked know. your show talking about <laughs> shoes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, dogs like talking about shoes too. <laughs> so, all right, that was the soft coated wheat interior. Uh, great dog. We. Uh, we hit every angle of that one. So just, hey, is that the right dog for you? We can talk through it even further in the store. We can do a little playing with that little soft coat beaten terrier as well uh, and see if that's the right dog for you or your family. And uh, it's important to mention just last Thursday was pep Puppy Day. Puppy Day. And as you said, every day is. This puppy day at yeah. Petland. Right. When that when uh, I see that comment, I always go, it's it's kind of like families with young children and Christmas. Well, isn't every day <laughs> Christmas in this house? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, uh, every day is puppy day in Petland. For I, sure. I always love going into Petland. And, of course, with my two young boys, you know, they can see about that first level. But when starting to get to the point where you can start to see on some of the upper cages and dogs just – some of them are just all excited, ready to jump through the glass – and other ones are like, eh. totally chill. Just yeah. like, hey, what's going on, man? <laughs> hey, welcome in. Welcome in to Petland. It's, uh, it's it wouldn't be a good creator. It's kind of cool in here. Yeah. <laughs> I get the excitement going. So soft coat of Terry is going to be the excited one for sure. So that's where that one is. We wanted to talk about socializing your dog, whether it's a puppy or an adult. So how is your Great Dane as far as socializing? I, I got the impression that it was pretty, pretty dang good. She was wonderful. Uh, we would take her down to, uh, not when she got a little bit older, but we would take her down to the Summer of the Arts Festival and kids would, I mean, mm -hmm. she just had that demeanor where kids would be able to come up because it, to a child, it looks literally like a horse. Yes. Uh, and we would always, you know, just a hey, stick your hand out, do those kind of just right. no jerky movements or anything like that. She was always great, uh, and she was great with other dogs too. No, never roughhousing. I mean, I, we really did get spoiled with her. Right, but you did that probably from a puppy. What did you do during the puppy phase? You know, did you get them out kind of the same? We went thing? to the dog park several several times, yeah. uh, and just just getting her, I guess, acclimated. As far as one of the things that that uh, uh, we did is. My personal opinion on the expandable leashes where you can let your dog run like 25 feet away and then the retractable cord back. One thing that we always do did was we used a fixed uh, length leash. And so she never, 
uh, she never would have the ability to be able to run 25 feet away or 20 yeah. feet away. And that was where we always trained her just to walk right on our hip. And she did it till the day she died. Right. And I think we've even talked about this already on the show. You know, so one of this, we're going to kind of randomly go through some social behaviors. One of the social behaviors that a dog will do that gets irritating to the owner is this yanking thing mm -hmm. when they're just always yanking. And I'll admit, there is no one way to do this and it doesn't always work but we've got a lot of tools at our store on how to help you with it um, i have one yanking dog at home and the other one kind of meanders right next to you what you just pointed out though was is so many people go oh i've got a yanking dog and oh it's going to yank my arm off and then they go to that retractable lead and they're the same customer that will bring back that retractable lead and go it broke <laughs> because it went all the way to yeah. the end, and guess what it did then? Yanked that, mm -hmm. and that's the weak point of all of those retractable sure. leads. So the retractable lead is not a solution to a dog that constantly is pulling your arm. In fact, you're, you're saying, go ahead, do it, yep. and you can go further, because what does the dog want to do? It wants to go out and discover. They're like that two-year-old or younger even child that is always saying, how can I... Uh, how you know what's out there and all that kind of stuff. discovery and all well, that. Well, they kind want of. to explore, yeah. but but it, it depends on how you want to train your dog. Just mm -hmm. like we were talking, sometimes you want to. So there are people out there that will want to train their dog to bark. Uh, there are yep. some people that just hey, if they want to, if it wants to roam around, just go whatever. We always just kind of wanted to make sure that it was reined in and and she was always on our hip. Some things that you can do is one is have a fixed length and actually have a shorter fixed length. There are some leads that actually they have that, you know, a four foot length and then it's got the loop that you hold on to, but then they also have the loop right down where it attaches to the dog, to the, to their collar. There's a loop there. So you literally can get them to get used to one side, you know, whether it's your right side or your left side and have them walk right along with you. Now to increase their, Hey, I want to do this with you is give them a treat. We have these little lickety sticks that are really cool. They're like, I'll picture a roll on, and then inside there, instead of deodorant, uh, there is, you, I, you got a visual in the, in the studio <laughs> here just now. Um, instead of uh, the deodorant in there, it has a very great tasting fluid and it has some smell to it for the dog as, as well. And so they just love this thing and you open it up, the roll on has the little goop on it for them. You get, you kind of plug them in, they lick, 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 and then you put the cap back on, put it back in your pocket or whatever. Now, when you're walking, you got that shorter lead and let's say they're, they're, uh, they, they have that problem where they're gonna, you know, yank your arm off thing. Well, only reward them when they're walking right next to you. Do not reward them at any other time so that they start going, oh, when I walk right next to you, I get a little treat. I get a little look of the roll on thing. This is really cool. I'm going to keep on doing this so I can get more of this. And you also then back it up. And I bet you, you did this even. Good dog. Good dog. Oh, you know, gave them reassuring tones, maybe a scratch, you know, kind of a thing. So ways that they go, yeah, I'm doing good. They're, they, they must have something in them that says, I want to, I want to be with you. I want to please you and all that kind of stuff. And we have the same thing going for them. Uh, I was going to say, as for socializing other dogs, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, she would she would never have any problems, and and we would go out, and kids would walk up. One of the funniest stories, if I can, yeah, if I can tell you this as far as social. You're social, gonna what hijack the the show again? I am uh, the uh, socialization of uh, Greta, my great dame, Blue Merle. Uh, we she would lay all day with kids yanking. I mean, my son would lay on top of her. Uh, uh, and watch cartoons. She was just one of those very passive dogs. And it was around, uh, so this would have been probably, I don't know, uh, summer of 2010. Uh, we were over uh, at a friend's house announcing that uh, uh, we were going to have a kid. And, and it was a big deal and everything like this. And Greta's sitting down in front of the coffee table and a friend of ours uh, was so excited for us that he came running around the side of the couch in a very aggressive manner, wanting to give oh, yeah, uh, a Kayla a hug. Yeah. And this dog jumped up from a uh, just passive lay still and literally bit his rear and drew blood. Whoa. Uh, and we had never seen anything like that before. Yeah. And our reaction, she picked up on it so quick 
She picked up on it so quick, she turned around and returned exactly to her spot. So I think that she probably thought that she did something bad, but in that in that situation where it was very innocent, she was doing something very good. Yes, and so that's so let's dissect what you just brought uh, there. So on the front end, everybody goes, or no, not everybody, but some people go, I want a guard dog. I want a dog that will protect me, you know, kind of a thing. I, you know, if a stranger breaks in my house, I want it to take action. You don't have to train, and you just demonstrated a situation where you don't have to train a dog to do that. Once you are part of their pack, they then want to protect the pack. And so uh, that's something that's instinctual and will continue to be instinctual in that dog. So just say I, the dog's going to do the right thing at the right time. There is that occasional dog that yeah. just lays there. Yeah, you're right. But most of them will jump in action like what you're talking about. Okay, so don't train a dog to be aggressive. They'll do the right thing usually when that thing happens, especially if you put – tones you know if you're yelling screaming uh no 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 you, the sense that duration thing um and then they go after it i can um we haven't done it for a long time so i don't even know if our dogs will do it if i we've played this thing where all because we know the dogs would do it and and i'll go you know oh wendy or whatever yeah. and she'll go no no yeah. you know whatever and the dogs will get better and get a little growly and, you know, all that. And she could do the same thing to me and the same thing happened oh, both ways. I, so, was gonna, I thought you were going to say if, if she did yeah. it to you. Because then... I've been like laying down on the ground and went, no, no. And yeah. just, and Wendy, you know, will be more aggressive. All that. You see, you guys are like going, oh, a little strange things happen at that house. Oh, my gosh. We are just having fun with dogs. Uh if I did it to Kayla, or uh, if I did it to Kayla, Greta would uh, instinctively come up, and her favorite, her favorite spot to bite me was on the back of my tricep, and she would nibble the back of the tricep. If Kayla did it to me, nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. And uh, since you're grabbing a piece of paper and you're no longer on the uh, microphone, I can only assume that the uh, the fear that you had when you walked into the studio actually just happened, didn't it? Yeah. Have you ever heard of, mm. oh, you're pumping a grumpy? Is that the right way to say it? <laughs> I think dogs were the ones that invented that. So I'm laughing hysterically over here because <laughs> this little cockapoo is urgh, urgh, and, and like running around. Well, the action has yep, occurred. It's done. <laughs> Uh, so uh, for all not of grumpy our, anymore. All, not grumpy anymore. Uh, I'm just happy that when I was holding it a little while ago, it didn't decide. <laughs> How much do you feed that dog? Holy cow! Look at the size of that thing. That's like, holy cow! Going back to uh, uh, different sizes of breeds and stuff like that. Uh, we were talking I was with hoping you weren't going to go different sizes of other things. No, on the ground. Uh, I, oh my lord, Ron! Uh, while you're uh, tending to that, uh, we were talking with the uh, different. Um, uh, pedestrian uh, doggy spots like downtown and I had a Iowa City Council member in uh, last week that was talking that some of the smaller dogs uh, owners think that they don't have to pick up their dogs oh, no. and it's become a problem for uh, really well, the city is looking at it kind of like you know we all have to work together and be responsible but that was an issue that she brought up and and we kind of tagged about during one of our uh, government days last week was you know, the city has gone out and tried to put these doggy relief stations around the Ped Mall and Chauncey Swan when they get done with that. And now uh, dog owners aren't being very responsible with it. So okay, well, I was here, just, I was. But this, is, this ties into social behavior. You know, it's the dog and the owner. And the owner's got to, if here, I think everything that we talked about so far, the yanking of the lead, the owner's got to figure out how to work with their dog on um, that <laughs> uh, with the. Um, anger issues, you know, the, the dog will attack and all that kind of stuff. That's the owner has to take you know, ownership of it and figure out how to handle that. We're going to get back to that. But in this situation, it's another social behavior. You know, we talk about, well, my dog barks at other dogs or attacks. Hey, let's back up. There's some more simple things that I think most of us have to take care of. And in this case, picking up after your dog, it's a privilege to have our dog with us out at the ped mall or where they allow dogs. Right. That's a privilege that we can't take advantage of and we got to respect uh, because we know that if we don't do it, and here you, you're bringing up a point, we're going to get kicked out. And we don't want that to, 
happen. We want to work socially with everybody, with our companion animals and all. And hey, there's sometimes when, you know, when Wendy and I are out and it's not appropriate to have our dogs. Uh, there's some of the up in Cedar Rapids has some really big fairs in the city, the farmer's market thing, and they're pretty blatant. I, we respect that because obviously they had an issue and they don't want that issue to occur again. And I, we're like, okay, we don't bring our dogs there. And so be respectful to organizations that are trying to do things and all that. All right. I want to go back to though that the angry dog thing. Why does that happen? Um, there are what social norms, behaviors that we, we put around us. You know, we describe, you know, you as a, an expressive and you uh, use your hands when you talk and all that kind of stuff. Well, we do have those same things for dogs and we call uh, dogs pack animals. Now, do we know this for a fact? No, because we haven't talked to dog and they haven't told us, yeah, that's the way we think. <laughs> uh, but we've put these social norms on them and they seem to work. So if we go down that path, that dogs are pack animals, they, you know, they love to be in the pack, they will protect the pack. That's where we get into the behavior that you saw in there, that somebody outside the pack was in the territory was acting normal, you know, fine for a while. So no, no problem. I don't, you know, as a dog, I don't have a problem with you. Oh, but wait, what are you doing? Right. You're, you're going after one of my pack, really what appears to me as aggressive. And we might be laughing. Dogs don't laugh. So they don't know what that means. Um, and all these other things. And so they misinterpret it. And that's where that happens. Um, we can work on that now, social behavior. If we go, well, wait, hold on. I, I don't, I can't have that happen. I'm around a lot of strangers or I just don't want my dog to attack strangers or other dogs. It was the fact also that she did it and then she returned straight almost directly to the spot that she was sitting prior to. So she, she did learned a little she bit. She didn't that. keep going, which we were always happy about because I mean, we were expecting a baby. So, you know, if, <laughs> if she had kept going, right. that would have been a totally different situation if it turned, if it turned tragic. But I'll tell you, uh, now is a seven, almost eight years later, we are laughing still at yeah. that dog dying white underwear. Right. Put it that yeah. way. <laughs> so, so we can socialize them in that way. And, and generally, and you can use this with, oh, my dog doesn't get along with other dogs. Oh, my dog doesn't get along with strangers or men with hats. That's always the thing. You know, man with a hat is, is done bad things to a lot of dogs. Apparently, um, these are things what backing away men with hat it's just a way the dogs they perceive something there that maybe you look like a stranger now with that because my own dogs will bark at me when i put a baseball cap on okay okay i don't recognize you now you know you got this crazy looking thing with a bill coming out um you're not you know ron the owner anymore kind of thing so what we can do in those situations is if they're barking or biting or being aggressive and growling T put distance between you and that whatever's happening, whether it's another dog, a person, uh, or, or whatever. Put distance between you until your dog stops growling. Now reward that behavior. Now bring them just a little bit forward. And you got to, every uh, situation is different. A little bit forward, uh, not growling. Okay, reward that. Now a little forward. Oh, got my growly going. Um, now bring them back. Uh, to the neutral and you just keep repeating that but you're encouraging and promoting the calm behavior and you're ignoring the other behavior so that's some ways to help you go through that situation where you can um, your dog can approach another dog uh, in a fence or your dogs may be in the fence kind of a thing um, you can help them understand that be barky less this does take time this isn't a something that gets done in a day or a week or a month it's over time you just are always practicing this when you're out for a walk maybe even the people around you don't know what you're doing they just notice that you're you know kind of huddling with your growly dog um, and bringing them back a little bit and that's okay so just have your lickety sticks or your treats and a lot of good dog, good dog when they're doing the right thing. So that's in general how to sit, uh, handle that situation. There are some other things that can do as well, but it's more into the uniqueness of that situation, that dog. So uh, let's go into, uh, okay, we kind of touched the potty training thing. Uh, potty training is sometimes a, it can be a social deterrent. It might be more you and your dog socially 
you're not doing as good because your dog is pooping and peeing in the house. So let's train your dog on how to not do that. And there's, we've had other shows and we will go in, back into that again in future shows. Um, but you want that situation to be controlled. I'm, <coughs> Little cockapoo is uh, chewing on my shoe again. Um, <clears throat> but you also want your dog to not do that in other people's houses. And so that's why it's important to train your dog to do this. And I don't care whether you have a young dog or an old dog, you can treat, tra train those old dogs to not poop or pee in the house. With all of these things that we're talking about uh, in social behaviors, I think the best thing that, that you're going to get out of it is you're going to love your dog more. Um, picture that dog owner that is uh, barking, 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 incessantly barking, and then uh, you figure out how to stop it barking or significantly less, less than that barking. You're going to love that dog so, so much more. Same thing with potty training. Um, we, uh, Callie w pooped and peed in the house extremely well. She was an expert at pooping in the house. And we're like, golly, because we got her at a year and a half, had some issues, social issues already. In fact, that's why she got kicked out of her previous house. Uh, and so we made the commitment and said, we're going to figure this thing out. No, there's no bailing out on this one. Kind of like if I interrupted you every single 10 seconds, we might not do the show very much longer, but if I stay quiet and let you go and get some it, things out, it, get finally. everything that you want to get out, then uh, it seems like you're going to love me. I feel so much better. You're going to love me a little bit more. <laughs> yes. And I've, you know, why am I, why do I emphasize this? Because I experienced it. And every dog owner that has solved a problem goes, Oh my gosh, I love my dog so much more now that she is falling in line with our social behaviors. And and dogs should not be a liability like that where right. you're sitting there going, oh my gosh, why did I get this thing or whatever. Yeah. And understand dogs are going to, and maybe we don't want to touch on it right now, maybe next week would be uh, the lifespan of dogs. Under, uh, dogs understand that some of these breeds are going to, over 20 years going over 20 years other ones you know like the great dane eight to ten i think is their average so you know you got to take that into consideration also about how uh how your how your lifestyle is going to meet up with theirs right the commitment yeah is is a long-term commitment are we getting close to the let's do treats all right let's go on to treats all right so a lot of what we do with our dogs, we do through emotion and all that kind of a thing. And I have been feeding, I think it's for a year now, not only uh, our dogs at home, but the, even the puppies at Petland. Uh, and then if any customer comes in, we've got samples actually that we can uh, give you right now uh, to, for you to try primal freeze-dried food. And I'm going to say, okay, I don't feed primal freeze-dried food as the primary food. I have a kibble. I, I use health extensions. And so that's their primary. But then we'll sprinkle a little bit of this on there. Actually, I found my dogs don't want me to break it up. They like it when it's a, just a chunk, a big mm. chunk. So I put the big chunk on there. Um, and I just find it's always the first thing that they grab uh, and they chew it up and all that kind of stuff. So I find a lot of on the emotion side, I get a lot of gratification seeing my dog eat this stuff because while they don't look like they smile, I swear they're smiling when they're eating this stuff. So it's a really cool food in that perspective. Um, it's freeze dried. So it has this, there's this whole uh, thing about how it's got the enzymes in it and that, uh, you know, all sorts of great things are going to happen. I'm fine with that. I, I don't know what all that means and all that. And I haven't seen the scientific study to prove to me I'm a science guy. Um, but you know what? I'm okay because I do know that it tastes, the, the flavor has to be preserved when you don't cook it as much. And maybe we like things cooked. I'm thinking the dogs like things not cooked as well. And that's definitely, they can smell more, taste more, and all that kind of stuff. So we use it at our house. And then as puppies go, if you have a dog that's elderly uh, or young, or maybe it's feeling a little out of the weather, you know, had a bout of some kind of a sickness, you had to go to the veterinarian, and you're worried about it eating, I am telling you, get this primal freeze-dried food, sprinkle it over the food itself, 
and they attack it. You got a smile on your face. I just keep remembering the phrase pump the grump. <laughs> no, pump a grumpy. Pump a grumpy. Okay, sorry. I think that might, I don't know if that's a old term. And so I was, I was thinking about you were saying this going old, young, maybe just isn't quite feeling good. You can give it to it and then pump a pumpy, a grumpy. Pump, pump a, a grumpy. grumpy. I think that's from dogs. I think people made that term up because we just saw it in the studio. And he was, ur, 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 and he was like wiggling around doing the doggy dance that yep. we all know. But he put a crowl to it. And I'm like, oh, this is pumping a grumpy. All right, enough poop talk. So, Primal food. Poop talk with the Positively Petland Show right here on 800 We love talking <laughs> poop. All the kids are going, yay. Uh, so, the primal freeze dried food is something that we use even on puppies and it gets them just eating it down. And so it's great for those under the weather dogs, senior dogs. If you're trying to put some weight, it is hugely high in the protein side of things. So it is a great product to get some weight onto your dog as well. Um, we're even using it as treats in our house. Um, you know, if you want a motivator, uh, scientifically proven there's nothing better than a treat and something that you know gosh it looks like they're smiling when you bring it out that's a really good treat primal uh, freeze-dried food and treats fit that bill a hundred percent any final thoughts we got about 60 seconds or we're, so we're pet land from iowa city located across from this or located at the sycamore mall across from lucky's market um, take advantage of our $5 nail trim. If you're struggling with that, bring them on in. We'll help your dog through that process. And if you want to even be trained on how to do a nail trim, we'll actually train you how to do it too. Uh, then take advantage of all of the premium foods. What is your price range that you're looking for? We'll go through that and we'll show you all the features that these foods now have, which gets very confusing and the internet is not helping that. Um, come in, we'll select it out and all of our dog food and cat food is on a buy 10 get one free we track it for you so don't have to even worry about that there it is it is the positively petland show right here on aim 800 kxic you can hear the positively petland show with ron owners along with his wife wendy every sunday morning right here at 9 a.m have a great day everybody get out and uh, visit those puppies See ya.